Crap with Beth and Matt. Cut to Crap is the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Hey friends, we are back and on this week's episode we chat with our friend, fitness and mindset coach James Capola. James has been in the fitness industry for 16 years and has managed several gyms. He shares his experiences with us and gives us some advice on what to look out for in a gym and a coach and how you can make sure you find the right trainer for you. Let's jump right into the conversation. Hello. Dun, dun, dun. James. James, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Fucking looking good. Feeling better. Hell yeah. There you go. Well, <laughs> man, the myth, the legend. I like to call him. <laughs> uh, how's, how's the heat over by you guys? Uh, steamy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here in Ohio, it's warm, but it's going to be storming here today and it's actually cooling down a little bit. So it's going to be steamy for sure. Um, yeah. But not very humid, but not quite as hot as it has been. So not as hot as Austin when I was there this weekend. Oh, yeah. 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 Austin is really hot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's 95 here today. Where are you located, James? Uh, New York, Queens. That's, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. It's yes. definitely the accent. So. Uh huh. Love it. I lived in, I lived in Harlem for six months and my brother actually oh. lives, my brother lives on uh, Bleecker. <clears throat> oh, nice. Yeah. He's been there for a God, 20 years, maybe. Yeah. Fame, fame runs in the family with uh, the Farakos or not, uh, not Farakos with the, the, Wil- the Wil- Wilkuses, Wilkuses, right? Yes. Yeah, Wilkuses. Yeah. Wilkuses. Yes. Wilkuses. yeah. My brother has a fucking blue check mark and I'm like, how did you get that? But he does <laughs> acting stuff. So oh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> So we're ready right. to rock and roll, man. You ready to do yeah. this? Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. We just Always. roll right into recording. We shoot the shit and we just fucking go with it. So we just, we Beautiful. just go with the flow. So, okay. Man. That's, that's James. Great. great. Everybody that's it. listening, if they're not familiar with you, first of all, um, you've been crushing the TikTok game lately. The TikTok Thank content, you. really, really enjoying it. You've, yes. you've, and you're starting to grow a following too, as a, as a result of that, I feel like, I think last time I checked, you were up to like mid 20,000 followers or so. Um, yeah. So that's, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, I'll, the floor is yours. Yep. Yeah, so I always felt very passionate about what I had to say in my message because I've been in this industry for half my life and I've learned a lot about myself, a lot about my clients. And I just knew that I wanted people to hear my voice. And the algorithm was holding me back. If you remember, like almost like last year at this point, I was messaging you going, how do I fix this with the algorithm? Yeah. And I was just annoyed because I refused to do what everyone else was doing. I refused to go like, all right, maybe I should talk about this or I should do more of this. Like, no, I'm going to continue to do what I do. Yeah. And just the balsamic um, and LaCroix video just gave me everything I needed for (laughs) people to finally hear my voice and listen Mm -hmm. to me and just know that I'm coming from a genuine, no bullshit place. Mm -hmm. And like my, my business name says it all. It's it's just zero shortcuts. This is, this is, if you're in the quick fix or anything like that, that's not what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying I'm not going to get you great results, but we're not in a hurry. I need you to accept yourself and sustain this. And Mm -hmm. all my content is trying to allude towards that. And just um, anyone who says that, I don't care if it's one person who says that I like help them, that I'm doing my job. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, we're Absolutely. the same mindset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you kept going with the videos because it really just you just got to keep going with with yeah. just, you know um, just doing shit on um, TikTok that you love and not trying to be someone that you're not. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? And it, sometimes it just takes a while to people to realize. And you know, fear sells more than anything. <laughs> unfortunately, I, so I, I uh, you know, close. I I came close. I have a few drafts that I deleted. Uh-huh. just like tiktok dances and stuff and i'm like no 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 i can't do it i can't do it oh come on we got to see you dance james <laughs> yeah come on everyone does the tiktok dances when they first start <laughs> yeah i've done true. i've done a few dances on the pole yeah 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 because your wife um does pole That's dancing, right. right yeah see amazing there it is oh, i love that like right straight in the middle of your room i love it oh yeah people and- come in knowing this is a fun apartment good <laughs> That's awesome. And. On that note too, how it took you kind of a while, a long time to get some traction under you. And I think that's a really important message that we can teach to our, our clients and to people Mm -hmm. listening too, right? Is consistency. We're doing the same shit. Like we're not seeing results right away, but we know the results will come if we keep putting in the hard work and not taking shortcuts, as you say. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. And took you a year to pop off. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because like when you look back and this could be like related back to um, uh, um, like fitness goals and stuff like that. When you look back, you look at certain flaws and holes in your journey and mistakes that you really grown from and it's happening gradually. So you don't really get it. But if you like take the time to be like, oh, wow, I was doing this. I was doing this. That didn't really make sense. And just part of getting the results you want is going through the shit to realize how much growth you actually went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the trials and errors when, when you have the road bumps, right? The, the bumps on the road, when bad shit happens, when hard shit happens, how you respond to it is what matters. And mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's, what's going to get you the success. Cause that's what you learn about yourself in, in adversity, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and with, you just can't let it consume you. Yeah, no. exactly. Precisely. Um, so, so uh, that, James, how did you get started into fitness? I want to hear your story and where yeah, it all okay. be, where it all began with you. Where did James sure. begin? <laughs> so, <laughs> tell us everything. <laughs> so I was I started becoming a little fat kid at like seven years old, I think, and just I used to just go nuts with my mom's um Entenmann's cookies and S cookies, and just like I was obsessed with food, mm -hmm. and it just kind of grew and grew. And I come from a bigger family. Um, it wasn't anyone's fault though, besides mine. And eventually when you started getting to an age that kids become mean, you know, I was getting bullied. Um, I still had some good friends, but the bullying was pretty bad. I remember one time when my gym bag fell on the bus and my underwear fell, my underwear was big and I think, passed around the bus oh jesus uh, so that was that was hard and i it was pretty much that day that i knew that like well i don't think i'm gonna change anyone's mind so i might as well just start getting healthy um and i remember i just wanted to play sports because they didn't have it in me to just exercise so i wanted to start with sports and i wanted to join pop warner football at like 11 I think like 10 or 11 and they said I was too big and I'm like ah oh, god so what am I going to do now so I joined PTA basketball and that was the first time I had like a coach who believed in me or just made me I, I suck at basketball I was really bad but I tried my hardest I sprinted up and down the court and then the weight just started coming off and coming off and I remember like I never made a shot and one game I got a three pointer at like the end of the game and the whole place erupted and went nuts. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, this is fun. I like winning. I like succeeding. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what else can I do? And then I joined the football team because um, at this point it was middle school. So I could join modified uh, football and then I joined the wrestling team. And anyone who wrestles knows that you just lose weight without even trying. So Very before intense. you know it, so before you know it, I dropped a bunch of body fat. I learned about lifting as much as I could. I would kind of um, have lunch with my phys ed teachers to pick their brain. This was like eighth grade and freshman year. And mm -hmm. I remember um, like us having like an assembly freshman year and just people couldn't believe like how I looked at this point. I lost like 50 pounds and people were asking me to help them. So I did. And at this point, I didn't know anything about proper training or empathy or anything like that. I'm just like, you can't You're eat this freshman. and you have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just like, you got to eat this. You got to. And I was just teaching the wrong shit. Cause that's, that's just what I knew. I was very uh -huh. restricted mm -hmm. and I gave them crazy workout plans when like no one was ready for it. Um, like, like two hour workouts. Cause that's what I did. Cause I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And then just as time went on and as, Wrestling went on and varsity football went on. I got more lean, more jacked, and then more obsessed with my body and just thinking that that's all I have to offer. Um, mm. I was extremely restrictive. My, my advertisement was my abs. Sure. I even thought that a nipple ring would improve my aesthetics. I was, <laughs> I was wrong. 
<laughs> I was wrong. And I got it taken out before wrestling season. Oh yeah. That would be a recipe for disaster. Ouch. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I restricted myself so much that like when I drank junior year or senior year, I usually like blacked out like or whatever, because I wanted to get rid of all inhibitions. I wanted to eat without guilt. Mm. And I just drank a lot. And then college came. Um, I got my exercise science degree at Manhattan College. And same thing. I, when I partied, I partied hard because I lived such a big life of restriction. And then right after I graduated college, I got my um, ACSM certification along with like 10 others. And then I got my first job at Gold's Gym. I became the top trainer there for three and a half years. And then I knew that I wasn't going to grow there. Um, their, their, their pay structure was shit and they just worked you too hard. Mm-hmm. So I said, I have to make a move to the city. I don't make enough yet to pay for rent. So I'll just make the commute every day. So I got a job at Crunch. I asked, what's the fastest level of advancement? And they're like, if you have X amount of certifications and a degree, you're already a top level trainer. So I'm like, great, I already have that. And I would go into work from Monroe, which was an hour and a half away. I would take the 4.30 a.m. bus and I would come home at about 10 p.m. Wow. Whoa. And at this point, I had no clients either. So I'm not getting paid. So I'm just prospecting and prospecting and trying to make a name for myself. Mm. And then before I knew it, I was the manager of that club. Okay. And then they wanted me to do manage a different club. I broke a sales record there. And then I kind of looked at myself and I was just like, you became a corporate asshole. Mm. You are trying to sell people way more training than they need because of the pressure that's on your shoulders. Because it's all Mm. sales driven. Yes, it, they, they really, really press on you. And they try to make it seem like, oh, you're doing such a good thing. You're changing so many lives. And it's like, no, no, this person didn't need 300 sessions. Sure. Right. I was just trying to hit the quota. Yeah. And, and I hated it. And I hated how much I expected my trainers, my team to work and prospect without getting paid. Yeah. And... <laughs> it just really does become toxic and you began helping people for the wrong reasons. So I dropped down as a manager and I just became a regular master trainer at a a different club that I loved. And I went up to the manager. I said, look, um, my clients follow me everywhere. I have consistent 10 K months, so you don't have to worry about my revenue, but I'm not coming to any meetings. I'm not doing any team building exercises. (laughs) I'm, I'm just here for my clients and I'm going to give you the revenue you need because I know that's what you want. And if that's not enough, then I can leave right now. And they're like, no, that's fine. I'm like, good. So I just took care of my clients. I had consistent 10K at least revenue. So they never said anything. And then finally, finally, March 2020 happened. And I had an excuse to leave because we got furloughed. My wife and I always were going to make the jump to leave. And it was just, (laughs) I cared about my clients so much that I was afraid that if I left, then they wouldn't follow me or that I'd be abandoning them. Because a lot of them signed up with me for like years. Mm -hmm. So then we had no choice. And I remember in the beginning, we were enjoying unemployment for a little bit, drinking a little bit too much. And then we just had to go, all right, we got to, we got to do something. So I came up with the name. I got my LLC right there and I just started everything. Okay. So like many people, the, uh, the pandemic forced your hand in a way, because obviously gyms were closed down in person training was non-existent mm-hmm. illegal, even for some people. Um, right. So you had yeah. to make, make ends meet for yourself. Um, going back to like your, your, your personal training days, obviously there was, there's a big emphasis on sales. And I don't know if, if people really realize that, that, um, so, I mean, some gyms are different than others, right. In terms mm-hmm. of just being seen as revenue or as an actual person, but right. what were some of the, 
I guess, most negative things that you could take away from that, the sales side aside. Sure. Um, that people maybe so, aren't uh, aware of. So first off, um, for anyone, for any up and coming trainer who's thinking of going ahead and pursuing a person training, please know that you are just a number to the boss. You are expendable. Okay. So don't think that you have the leverage because they'll find someone else who they can like sucker into anything. And the problem is, is like I was a master trainer. So I sold master level rates. Right. And I would refuse to train anything else because just, I'm not going to work lower than that. And usually to get a quota, what the manager would do, they would call like one of my master clients and give them a level one package, which is about $70 off and sell like a hundred of them. So now unbeknownst to me, I now have to service a hundred sessions. That is more than half off of what I usually get paid. You're hardly getting paid any commission there. Yeah. Wow. And they'll do it and be like, well, we had a like hit goal. So thank you for that. And it's just, they have the right to do that. And it's horrible. And also um, from the consumer standpoint, my wife and I really did earn the title of master trainers. There are others who are just there for so long that they eventually get the title, but they're really, really not good. They don't show up on time. They're sloppy. They don't really care. They end the session early. So please always meet trainer before you invest, before you invest with the front desk, before you invest with the fitness manager, always meet the trainer and make sure they're a good fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on that note, James, what are some things that people can be looking for if they are looking for a personal trainer, right? I yeah. mean, there's a definite, definite need there for, for some people that, that need that in-person training. So let's start sure. um, forewarning here. So a real big red flag is when they start talking about the price like after mm. they ask you like three questions right like like you didn't take the time to get to know them you don't know what they need mm -hmm. um i always even say if you want to start off with five that's fine to give it a try even 10 for like two times a week for five weeks we can do that there's no big commitment you have to make today you know like i'm not going to be like oh well this is a labor day sale so you're going to miss it so like no no, it's, right. it's, 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 you're talking about a person making a huge commitment. Why am I going to put more pressure on them? Yeah. So, absolutely. so that's a red flag when all they're talking about is price and they're just trying to make it work. You know, it's a good fit when they just keep telling you the value you're going to get instead of either lowering the price or breaking it down. Like it's only this much per week or day. Like, no, if you're my client, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do <laughs> this for you. You said you needed this. I'm going to show up for you for this. Okay. Um, and just really breaking down the value and making sure that they're listening to you and showing empathy, building yeah. a relationship. Yes. And it's definitely a red flag when they assume your goals. One of my, one of my trainers kept insisting that this woman should have a weight loss goal and I wanted oh, to yes. strangle him. Yeah. Because that's and, not everybody's goal. Right. I mean, right, yeah, right, that's, not, that's right. not our place as trainers to tell you that you need to lose weight or that yeah. this, is your, this is your weight loss goal. Now, now yeah. the reason why, and this shows how uneducated some trainers are, is because the formula is um, you typically tell them, and, and the trainers who say this don't know the science behind it, um, you need to lose one pound per week or maybe two pounds per week. And you want to lose 50 pounds, so that's 50 weeks. Mm. So we have to train for mm. 50 weeks at three times a week. That's like... 150 sessions. So Jesus. 14, so $14,000, right? Oh my God. <laughs> Who the fuck um, can afford that? <laughs> Holy fuck. Some people, I'm, some people. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, some I people. guess you're right. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a market for that. some people. And that's why they like panic. If the person doesn't want weight loss, because that's the only spiel they know. It's the only thing they know. Gotcha. It's very, right. 
it's 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 easy to sell weight loss too. I mean, of course it is. It, it's mm-hmm. it's harder to to build a connection with somebody and and understand them, what drives them, what motivates them. Maybe they just want to fucking feel good in their body. And yeah, that, that's yeah, that's outside of weight loss. That's getting stronger. That's improving their mobility. Right. Um, working on like just every, working on things for themselves. It, it's not just weight loss. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and I want to make it clear, like when when I say that, like there's no problem with wanting to make a good living. There's no problem with wanting to make money with Absolutely. something that you're good at. Yeah. So I want to make that clear to like up and coming trainers. It's like, it's not that you're all about the money or this or that. It's that there has to be a level of your service that, that, that provides a good reason for you making that money, not you being a sleazebag. Doing yeah. it in an ethical way. And that's yes. one of the biggest things that I'm concerned with as a coach, I hate mm-hmm. sales. I hate marketing mm-hmm. um, yeah. because, oh because, God, of, yeah. because of slum, scummy trainers and scummy salesmen and coaches that I've been yeah. approached by and worked with even in the past and seen. Um, so I want to do everything I can in my power to do it in a, in a way that's ethical, in a way mm-hmm. that I'm doing, I'm actually helping somebody rather than just lining my bottom pocket. And yeah. do I make as much money as other people? No, but do I care? Also, no, because I'm happy mm-hmm. and, and people are, are happy with what they're, they're getting. So, yeah. Yeah, like I love your guys' approach and your guys' message. It's very, very genuine. I've been asked to be um, like collaborators with some other people who I just don't want to name, who sure. I've heard from past clients who they were burned from. Like there are too many people on this platform who are good mm-hmm. at making content and not coaching. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's a really good, really good point right there. And we know Absolutely. probably if some of the people that you're talking about, we're not gonna name drop, of course. Yeah, it's a very right. small community, the online coaching community. Right. Yeah. If you're a shit coach, if you're an un- unethical coach, people are gonna find out. Us other coaches are gonna find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Word travels fast. Yep. Uh, Be warned. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And that's every that's that's everything for us. I mean. Um, you see how easy it, I mean, when coaches are getting called out, um, on TikTok and on Instagram, like that, that stuff goes viral usually for, for a reason. Oh, of course. And people, people, people make a, a living off of doing that. They make a mm-hmm. name for themselves off of doing that. I mean, obviously, uh, we, we call out coaches that are threading in misinformation and bad information and, yeah. and things like that. But, um, uh, yeah. 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 Like, uh, the other day there was, um, someone who filled out my application and, there was a woman who was kind of on the fence between me and someone else with like a big following. Sure. And I already heard some bad stories about this person, but I didn't, I feel like when I bad mouth someone to someone else, it's just the whole negative energy doesn't yes. work Agree. well. Agree. So I was like, look, you can do whatever you want. If they resonate with you, that's fine. Um, but number one, you said that they took three weeks to get back to you. Red flag right there. And number two, they said that they already had a plan for you without even talking to you. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know you. yeah. Right. Right. And number three, they guaranteed results. Ah. Uh, and that's just all red flags. Yeah. I agree. And guaranteed then, results. Yeah. And then when she signed up with me, I, I, I just kind of like puffed my chest a little bit. I'm like, yeah, that's right. All you fucking content creators. I've been in this industry for, 16 years don't touch Mm -hmm. me and just I was just like I I I just felt really good because I get thousands of um like messages from business gurus and marketers like hey like wouldn't you rather like have like 100,000 or 200,000 followers I'm like no 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 no, I'll get there I'll get there organically if uh, um if it's meant yeah it's fine I'm in I'm in no rush if someone doesn't want to work with me because of the number of followers I have then great yeah yeah, yeah, I think it's important. Proof, that's the thing, but yeah, I think about- it's important to realize like it, the number of followers doesn't mean shit about uh, someone's coaching. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like I can go get, go viral from talking about something that has absolutely nothing to do with coaching, but I have grabbed an, I have an audience of people that are not interested in coaching. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't, right. it doesn't matter. Um, Unfortunately so. we see that too, Beth, with Somebody yeah. do, making that one video and they're, maybe their passion is just, just working out. And then maybe the workout video goes viral. Next thing you know, they're offering coaching with no credentials, yeah, it, no it education, makes, no exactly, experience. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and then they're doing things like putting people on 1200 calorie diets, right? Without, like with no context, um, they're giving them, there's the same workout plan that they're doing because it works for them. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> no customization, yeah. no touch points. They're not communicating with their clients. Here's right, your plan. Right. I'll they're see doing you what I did at 16. 
Right, right, right. You right. didn't know better. And you were still yeah. in high school. <laughs> yeah. And a, half of them have never worked with a person in their life or been an in-person coach. I think it's important to know actually that you will be a better coach online if you have coached actual people in person. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You can't just start coaching online without ever like helping someone in person with like form or because all bodies are different. I think it's just so important. Just human yeah. connection, um, all of that. Yeah, I will. I will fully admit that that we would have been in big trouble if we didn't have such a following already from crunch. Like mm -hmm. all our crunch people just followed us. So we were able to well, you made sustain yourself. ourselves. Yeah. So we were able to sustain ourselves as we built our online business mm -hmm. you know, for someone just starting out of nowhere. It's really hard. Yeah. Especially agreed. right now, the market yes. is really quickly becoming oversaturated. Like, right. Online training is a new hot thing. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. It's, it's really hard to break into the industry now. Um, yeah. Which why I'm thankful. And I'm sure Bethy would agree with this, why we're thankful we got into it before the pandemic hit. Um, like I started looking to come online in 2019 yeah. um, and then the pandemic hit, which of course I had already had it somewhat established at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really online coaching, I really think has become like since 2015 or 2016 or so is really when I think it started taking off. Cause I like mm -hmm. Wayne Norton, of course, is one of the pioneers there. Um, yeah, like I work, Jordan, I actually Jordan, with Syatt, with, and... yeah, Jordan Syatt, Jordan Syatt, right, yeah. right. how can I forget Jordan? Um, yeah. I worked with an online coach myself back in 2015 before I started, um, actually awesome. pursuing personal training in 2016. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. What's, what's, uh, been the biggest challenge for you with establishing your online coaching business and, and, um, and honestly, just, just straight up, um, I, I, I would say like systems and operations and organizing and stuff, but that's all just <laughs> like teachable. That's, that's all I, I could just learn that my, my wife is 10 times more organized than I am. Um, the imposter syndrome. Mm. Mm. All these things one. I can, I can already relate to all these. Yes. Like, I'm like, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so like one of the things that I get worried about, um, like when I see, um, people like pull out the green screen and like statistics and studies and like stuff like that. It's not that I'm lazy or anything. It's just that like, I don't go that far with my videos. I think, and I speak that's, that's just what I do. That's real. I'm, that's uh, really, you know what? I don't do that either. Do you ever see me? Yeah. Do that? No. I, I think people need to hear from people that actually they can relate to. Like a lot of people yes. don't understand that shit. Like keep it simple, yes. stupid. That's right. what Mike, right. Mike Boyle always taught me like, kiss right no one's gonna it's like you've got to talk to someone like they're fucking nine years old yeah that's how i learned yeah. too. that's what i um, that's, that's how, how i learned down to people it's just we um, need that so i don't yeah. want to listen to someone with all the fucking scientific data that i'm not ever going to remember like it really is simple we don't need to overcomplicate it um but i can relate to what you're saying <laughs> yeah and and i i just felt like um like like i would have compare myself like i was like do i need to be showing more like workout stuff you know like jpg and stuff like that and mm -hmm. then i'm just like well i do something very different than jpg me right. doing that would be trying to be like him and, and right. i don't have his demographic mm -hmm. so i have to be okay with what i'm doing and stop second guessing mm -hmm. it because yeah. it's gotten me this far already and sometimes you just don't want to appear like you're just speaking with general knowledge or something that seems too simple or not even a real like authority figure mm -hmm. yeah. um and i have to kind of snap myself out of that and i've been doing much better with it mm -hmm. good it, it's you know hard. what someone told me that helps is mm -hmm. that make make content not for other coaches yes but yes for people that you want to help because it's not about the fucking coaches enrico right? yes yes enrico a do you and know also do you know en enrico incarnati james yes Oh, he's okay. amazing. Yeah. And, and it's like, go into your videos. Who can I help today with rather yeah. than how, what kind of fucking content is going to go viral? Um, yes. So that, that's what's always helped me is like, all right, what, who um, can I help today? Like, what are the questions that my clients are asking me or what do I get all the time? And then just go from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it's just all about just trusting that what you're doing is working, just like the consistency with working out, as we mentioned. Like you can just see the positive trend. You can see that people are coming to your page for X reason. 
and they're going to get that and there's mm-hmm. no question about it mm-hmm. and i just wanted to be that person like oh if you want to learn more about this or more about yourself and body dysmorphia and everything mm-hmm. go here yeah and i just that's that's just what i always wanted and I think you do a good job of uh, like talking about yourself and your own journey because that helps other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and like people want to see the real person, like they want to see your life in, in between the fitness stuff because, you know, that's that's real. Yeah. And James, when you post your videos from your uh, vacations, which look amazing with your wife, you know, I right? you went to Italy, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. 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 Greece, Greece, yep. Italy, Amsterdam and Paris. Yep. Amazing. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. What a trip. What a trip. Oh, yeah. Um, you mentioned something there, too. And I know you and I talked about this back when we first connected a, a year ago um, was the body dysmorphia. And that's kind of what you and I actually kind of bonded over first was like our mm-hmm. experiences there and, and mm-hmm. how our own image of our own body kind of molded us into the coaches that we are today. And because that that t- that way of thinking failed us. Right. And it, it left mm-hmm. us. Um, being down and, and miserable and questioning ourselves and like, are we doing the right thing? Or who, are, who am I doing this for type thing? So can we talk about that a little bit? Like, how, how did you break that cycle, break, break through that mold of the body dysmorphia and, and never thinking that your body is good enough and hating your body? Oh, really? it's, it's, I didn't fully break through it yet. Sure. I'm, I'm, I it just, it doesn't consume me anymore. Mm-hmm. I feel my feelings. I feel mm-hmm. my feelings. I'm like, okay. And then I rationalize it and then I get back to whatever I was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stuff like that never goes away. You just get better at ha- yeah. handling the, the emotions yeah. and the thought process. Yeah. Yeah. I tell, I tell the same thing to my clients. Unfortunately, you are going to notice an unflattering photo of yourself. You are going to see an unflattering reflection of yourself. You yeah. are going to go into a fitting room that absolutely hates you. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you're the only one noticing those things. Nobody else is noticing that unflattering. Right. Yeah. I think it's important to, to know like the body dysmorphia is like happens to everybody. I think everyone has some form of it. Maybe some yeah. have more than others. Especially right. in our industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. A lot of coaches won't talk about that, but most coaches probably suffer from it at some point um, one mm-hmm. way or another. I mean, especially in the bodybuilding community, but that's not really what we talk about here is bodybuilding. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I will say like, I don't think that my body dysmorphia would be as bad if I had like a job in finance maybe, or I had some other job. I think I would Mm. be a lot more accepting of myself, but like I'm a walking billboard of myself basically. And just like to coach me, I like to look the part. I don't have to be shredded, but I don't want any doubts when I say I'm a fitness coach. Yeah. I feel that. And that's because, um, that's still beat into us too, that, shredded coach knows what they're talking about you know, know a coach that doesn't have visible abs oh they don't know what they're talking about like there's no way they could like just right no actually we practice what we preach like enjoying life and all things in moderation and that you know you don't need to be super shredded to be to be healthy and i think that's important and i know that's why i'm so grateful for coaches like you james um that are, that are starting to make a, a bit a better name for themselves a bigger name for themselves because we need more people like that in this industry yeah Thank you. I appreciate that. And I really appreciate you too, as well. Um, if, if I wasn't such a big fan of you guys, I probably wouldn't have joined, but it's a privilege (laughs) being, but it's a privilege being on this podcast because you both speak to points that really resonate with me. Love that, man. Thank you. Well, the the feelings mutual. We, yeah, absolutely. We're honored to have you on here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Um, so what's next for you? What, so what are you working on? Um, so at this moment, um, we do have full books, so we okay. are going to have a make a wait list. Nice um, Good problem to have. We are looking for lower ticket options. Uh, because here's the thing, my typical demographic, I am like starting them from like here. Sure. So mm-hmm. like I have to like introduce like everything, everything that I've built over 16 years, I have to try to condense into three months. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's a lot of bandwidth and I'm trying to think of a way to have a lower ticket option that is not cookie cutter and doesn't take as much of my time because my problem that I'm still trying to fix is setting boundaries with my own time and not, handholding. I yes. need to have more faith in the people that I help. 
mm-hmm. is ultimately holding somebody's hand through every step of the way. That's doing that's not doing them any favors because right. we're we're teaching them to rely on us, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> part of that does come from my own insecurities of like, oh no, are they going to think that they're being burned again? Yeah. Right. Right. Because a lot of my most people, people come are. to us being burned. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and also I've I've always struggled in school and my efforts and my personality and my willingness to show up is what's gotten me to where I am today. So I feel like I always need to utilize parts of my personality as much as I can. And that's requiring a lot of bandwidth. Mm-hmm. So we're so me, my wife, and our assistant are trying to come up with low ticket options for the leads that I had in the past who just couldn't afford my coaching at that moment mm-hmm. because I would love to help anyone who needs help. Yeah, Ex- absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, feel free to message us and I can give you a few ideas of how yep. to do Oh, that'd that. be great. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Dude, definitely. That. Yep. yep. I know, um, Beth, how long was it before like you branched out from just one-on-one coaching? For me, it was a good more than two years of one-on-one coaching before uh, I did yeah. have some type of another offer. So yeah, I'd say it was about two years. I'd say yeah. it was just about like one year ago that I, I, you it know, you're right around up, that same point then yeah. Um, started with group coaching. And like you said, James, like I was noticing that, you know, a lot of people can't afford one-on-one and that's okay. But mm-hmm. I feel like fitness should be for everybody. Mm-hmm. So there yep. should be more options available to people that can't afford that one-on-one. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think group coaching may could be an area which you could uh, venture into. Definitely. Um, and then also like something like a Patreon. Yeah. Especially okay. with the group coaching, because not everybody needs the the hands-on time that one-on-one yeah. coaching provides. Mm-hmm. Yes. Why would they pay for something that they don't necessarily need? And I want right, to keep them right. comfortable selling one-on-one coaching to somebody if they don't need it. And that's something sure. like as yeah. a, a most coaches would roll my eyes at or their roll their eyes at me, but I've turned people away. I'm like, I just I don't think that you need yeah. my oh, coaching. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. Turn, turn people away too. Yeah. 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 So yeah, definitely. I do think group coaching would be a great way to go as that lower mm-hmm. ticket item. Beth and I yeah. both have that ourselves. Um, so yeah. do definitely send us messages. We're happy to, to talk through anything. With yeah. That. We're absolutely. here to help everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate sure. that. Yeah. And Beth, I, absolutely. With the Patreon, like that's something we recently started, um, James, mm-hmm. for, for our, our podcast here as a really, as a, as a way for people to get help with workouts and a little yep. bit of nutrition help with like meal ideas and things like that. Cause mm-hmm. but most people are just like, I just need a workout plan and I don't right. want to, yes. I don't right. trust random workout plans. So, okay, here's, we've, you got two professionals that know what that, they're certified that know what they're doing. I'm going to follow this for five bucks a month, you know, and that's going right. to help. And, and maybe people have trouble sticking with it and they're, they're not holding, they're not being held accountable and they need more hands-on time. And maybe they'll realize that after the fact, like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not doing it. Why mm-hmm. do it? Why am I not doing it? So then they need to figure that out, but whether sure. it's looking inward yeah. or we're working with somebody one-on-one to figure out why am I just holding myself back? So yeah. now the anxiety that that gives me is one of the big parts of my program is form correction mm-hmm. and just, they send me videos and I send detailed form corrections back yeah. in a context that they can digest. And I feel like if I were to offer a lower ticket option of just that then once i start to inform corrections then i that just want to be able to help myself so yes, then that's those then are the be able to help myself then. that right right yeah right and um, then the guilt would bother me so much so yeah. i just have to be better at setting those boundaries that's yeah fair. that's absolutely fair we get that we, question a lot. we as coaches uh that want to help everyone have, have a hard time setting boundaries <laughs> Yes. But yeah. it, need, it needs to be done or you end up in burnout. So I, I've learned through experience and I'm actually, this is something I just talked to our coaches about at a team meeting is like setting mm-hmm. boundaries with your clients or else they'll be fucking trying to call you on the weekends. Um, and then mm-hmm. you got my coaches that are, can't stand not answering a client, um, you know, burning out because they're, you know, nonstop answering their questions, but also it's okay to not answer someone for 24 to 48 hours because you also want to create a form of self-efficacy for them yes. to try to figure things out on their own. Because if we keep our on them, like, okay, I'll, I'll answer you right away. Um, they're not figuring things out on their own and which, you know, it's about coaches are here to show you where to look, but not tell you what to see. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we have to remember that. 
And James, on that note too, one thing you could offer if you're not already offering it, this is a free option. And I do this. And I think Beth, you also do this is a Facebook group. Do you have a Facebook yeah. group, Beth? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's a support group. So um, I have one with like 4,000 people in it and there's always, and people are posting workout videos in there and they're just yeah. helping the, each other. Yeah. You know, win-win. Sure. Win. They're helping each other, and and that's amazing. That's what we that's we want a community like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're not selling them anything. We're just here to support people. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. Hell yeah, lots of options there. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about this one. Yeah, <laughs> totally. We can um, talk about this stuff all day. I get really oh, pumped yeah. up about it. <laughs> for sure. So, all right. So we had kind of things to look out for with looking for coaching um, and, mm-hmm. and the big box gyms. Do you feel like that's more of a big box problem versus a small, small local gym yeah. problem? Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, there's always going to be asshole trainers anywhere. Yeah. 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 Um, so you kind of need to, I've use never worked for a box, there. So yeah, but, but, but mainly big box, um, they don't care about you. Um, yeah. There's a few good trainers who do, and you really have to identify them. Um, yep. What, what level, our tier they're at is absolute bullshit. You, you could have a fantastic level one trainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also that that's a great point too. Cause like, you'll see different certifications online and so, so-and-so will be a master certified trainer with 20 years experience. And then you're like, there is no like standard for master trainers. No, like, there isn't. I mean, you saw awarded the... by the gym, you know? Yeah. So. Right. I mean, right. what about that video of the girl is like, I'm a master trainer. Uh, don't drink coffee before fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, right. It's like, what the fuck is master trainer mean to you? I mean, like, yeah. really? You have to go on and say that. I mean, people that know like other coaches and they know that that's bullshit, but yeah, exactly. that, that's, they're appealing to authority is what they're doing. Right. Um, that's yeah. That drives me. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you, when somebody opens a video like that, I'm like, oh, what kind of bullshit Shut is coming? Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyone who has to say the um, acronyms after their name or any like credentials beforehand for, for uh, like, like, like not, not, not like I'm a trainer and like nutritionist, but like, like, like if they just go into detail, like I have this and this and this, and it's like, all right, so you're going to get angry about something and try to convince me to believe you. Yeah. Yeah. The, it does. the only it, one it I really is... care about, go, go ahead, Beth. Sorry. Yeah. I hate that. I was just going to say, it drives me nuts. Like, uh, my name is Beth and I'm a an NASM fucking level one PN fucking it's like, mm. shut up. No, it doesn't actually matter about your credentials. If you, uh, are not a good coach to me, Yeah, uh, I agree. it, it really yeah. doesn't. And like, I asked Alan Aragon, I met him this weekend. And I was like, listen, what would be the best nutrition certification that you think that someone should take? Right. And he's mm-hmm. like, honest, he's like, honestly, just if you buy my book, it has everything in it. If you just, you know, like even, yeah, he was selling the book, but it's, <laughs> but it's, it's true book. that if he's like, if you're not a good person or a good coach in general, it doesn't matter your credentials. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When I um, hired trainers i they could have a sheet this long of certifications or their masters i don't care if you don't have empathy or if you yes. can't um condense your knowledge in a way that's digestible for your potential client then mm-hmm. just just you're just a walking textbook and i don't yeah. have well, first, always you. and if you have the yeah. people skills if you can connect with people and you fucking care about people then mm-hmm. that will people will realize that very quickly if you care about people or if you're just in it to make a quick buck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Also like there, there, there becomes this like obsession and imposter syndrome amongst trainers, especially in big box gyms who like, let's say they finally become like FMS, like certified. And someone's like, I just want to feel good and work out. And you spend mm-hmm. 30 minutes evaluating their overhead squat. And they're like, dude, like, can we work out? And it's like, I didn't, I didn't like come here like to, like make my fingertips touch behind my back. Like, yeah. And if they're just there to feel, feel better, why the hell would you yeah. have them doing an overhead squat? Right. <laughs> uh, right. 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 Yeah. And yeah. It just, again, it's too many people trying to impress their peers as opposed yes. to yes. listening to the client. Yes. Yeah. If you're the most hated gym, uh, hated trainer in the gym by other trainers, you're probably doing something right. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I speak from experience that happened yeah. to me. Remember, I don't know if you guys know that well. When I, I first started interning at the gym, um, as my, the owner of the gym is now the CEO of my business. Like we're really good friends. Anyway, it was like a small 
boutique type gym. Mm -hmm. Um, When he first asked me to intern, I got harassed by the two trainers there. Like it was so brutal, like uh, almost quit. Oh, wow. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. They were supposed to support me and train me. Like I, I didn't know what I was doing and they would come to the classes that I was teaching um, and say, you didn't, you didn't demo this right. And you know, you, you didn't do this and this it's like, anyway, um, bu- down. bullying from other trainers that were there to, you know, and they ended up getting fired. So. Um, so. And I, I know Hunter did the right thing would have done the right thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah like I will never forget this um i was managing a club and there was three other trainers this was like the 6 30 a.m group and there were three other trainers and there was just one pompous master trainer who i just couldn't stand who i was like this close to firing and there was someone squatting and they just had like a little bit of a keel elevation their ankles mm-hmm. were a little bit tight he threw a foam roller at them looked at the trainer and said, have her fucking foam roll, please. I can't look at that anymore. Oh. Wow. And I was just like, you. Wow. Back here. And wow. I just like told my client to excuse me. And I, I just unloaded it on him. Yeah. And thank God he quit because I was about to fire him. But I was, I was just like, There's, I saw red. Because yeah. first off, she was embarrassed as fuck. Mm-hmm. She was so embarrassed. And the trainer was so embarrassed. He was new. Mm -hmm. You you, you just like traumatize this kid. Mm -hmm. Right. And it just like so many people think it's their world and we're just living in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And they just have to know that other people exist and they have needs and wants and we have to listen to that. And that's what makes a good coach. Yeah. Putting yourself aside. Yeah. How hard is it to want to maybe help the coach later on and be like, Hey, you know what? Maybe next time try Like give him a tip. Like, don't be like, here, you're a fucking idiot. Have her phone roll. um, You know what I mean? It's like, this was a 42 year old guy who hated that. I was a 27 year old boss of his. mm. Right. He's like, Oh, this, this fucking like young young guy. Yeah. (laughs) And just, it just screams insecurity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I, I, I always said I, I, I never want to be the smartest person in the room. I will always ask questions. I will never feel yes. inferior. Mm-hmm. And I'll be the first to admit I'm not either. So yeah, like, same. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I can fucking, I, I love people. I love connecting with people. Yeah. I love helping yeah. people. And that's really what matters. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people get into personal training and coaching because they, that's all they know is the gym. Like, Oh, I'm jacked. I'm just going to get into personal training, but they don't have those people skills. And right. That's when shit like that happens. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And, and that's why like, that's why I hate the, like what I eat in the day things when like people oh. are like really jacked and then like people are like, okay, I'm going to try this. And I'm like, right. you're going to hate your life. Right. And, and, and then they're like, yeah, just a quick link in my bio to train to me. And they're like, thanks. And I'm like, these poor people don't realize that like that is all he is offering yeah. he is not going to make you feel positive about yourself he is not right. going to look for sustainable changes he is going to make you drop 30 pounds in 60 days and not help you when you gain it back he'll just that's a red flag there charge too. you again yes mm-hmm. X amount of weight and X amount of time. I refuse yeah. to do that. And I, I despise yeah. that when I see it because you don't know. Um, there's so many variables to consider. Like, you know, you yeah. can't just say, oh yeah, you come work with me. We'll get you 30 pounds lost in, in the next 90 days or whatever. Yeah. That's bullshit. And, and, and also like it's some big fucking secret. The three of us are very capable of having someone lose 30 pounds in 90 days. Right. That's easy. Take away everything and <laughs> work your ass to the ground. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's not hard. It doesn't take skill. It doesn't. Correct it takes no patience from you. It's, it's very evident that you don't have the patience to figure this person out. And and I guarantee you, like when they're like, Hey, like, like I get message, very heartfelt messages of real issues of like them um, going out to dinner and breaking down crying because of a tagged picture that they have. And I have to be there for them. Mm -hmm. And like someone like that is like, all right, so we just have to um, just like cut your carbs now. And like this and like blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, no, motherfucker, this is a human. Yes. And it's like, and it's going to happen again if you don't fix this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Behavioral change is, is honestly 
behavioral change is, is everything in, in this industry. If you're looking for, if you're looking for long lasting permanent results and a lifestyle change, it comes down to behavior change. And I don't yeah. care yeah. about the X's and O's of fat loss at that point. Let's tackle the behavior first. And then we'll, right. the other shit will take care of itself almost at that point. Yeah. So on that Absolutely. note, James, where people love what you're about, if they've loved hearing about you and hopefully they did because you're a fucking awesome mm -hmm. dude, um, right. where can they find you and where can they learn more about you? So right now our website is under, uh, my website is under construction, but um, my TikTok is J underscore Coppola Fit Coach. So C-A-P-P-O-L-A. And my Instagram is J underscore Coppola. Perfect. Amazing. We'll make sure to plug that in the notes and make sure everybody yes. goes and, and sends you some love, man. Give James Thank a you. follow. Really <laughs> everybody give James a follow. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and everyone listening, obviously, you know that Beth and Matt are great. I follow them myself. I even learn a lot. So thank you for being you guys. Dude, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate that. We're in this together. We are. Yep. We're all here to help each other. Absolutely. Great. All right, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate it. It was nice talking no, to you. No problem. Take care, guys. Bye. 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 All right, Beth. What's James up? Coppola. James Coppola. James Coppola. What a nice guy. He is. He's such a, he's such a genuine dude. For real. Um, I remember, I, I seriously remember when he first reached out to me and like, he was just feeling very frustrated trying to get yeah. started on, on TikTok and online. He's like, dude, what can I get this? it? Um, I, yeah. Like obviously we had a following and, every, we, and everything. So I, yeah. I was more than happy to help him out. I'm just so happy to see him thriving and for real, and he's been consistent well. and deserves yeah. every, every bit of it. Absolutely. And you know, on that note too, I think it's so important that us as coaches embrace other coaches and help other coaches too. Yes. Um, yes. It's not us versus them. Like you and me have separate businesses, coaching businesses. Like I know. we were talking about this on our TikTok live earlier. Mm -hmm. um, like we would recommend, we would, if I needed a coach, I'd go to you. Like if you didn't have your own coach on your team, like, yeah, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had. Like, Oh, I'm deciding between you and Beth for a coach. I know. I'm, like, I know. I'm like, Hey, like, that's amazing. Um, yep. you're in good hands either way. I know Beth and her team are going to crush it. And, and here's how we can help you. And there's no hard yeah. feelings if you go with her, like, I just want you to get the help that you need. And I've done right. referrals for other coaches too. Yeah. Um, we're here to just pick each other up. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, too much negative competition out there which are there there's a plenty of people to help there's seven billion people on this fucking earth. you know, you know i mean <laughs> maybe six billion what's the number let's, <laughs> let's just 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 be nice to each other there's no yes. reason to fucking throw you know everyone under the bus for no reason for stupid shit i mean i, I, I obviously we're going to call people out who are correct for when it's know, deserved when they're spreading when bullshit deserved, information. but if yeah but you know not for the majority are just trying to fucking help people like what we have, like we're working on, right? Like I'll go ahead and give a little sneak peek of this. Like we're trying to organize like a, an amazing meetup with other coaches, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. hopefully we can make that happen. And if we do, like that's clearly, we're just here to help each other and to help exactly. other, help other um, um, clients and non-clients with our content and everything. Yeah. So. Cause it's, I think it's, I learn from other coaches. I think it's important to take yes. something positive from everybody, you yeah. know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Mm -hmm. That was a great episode. Um, so Beth, what do we have coming? Let's see. We have, um, um well, okay. we have our Patreon what? of course, as always. So our, our month, our monthly challenge for this month is the squat challenge, which we should squat probably challenge. check in with people on yep. the squat I'm, challenge. So I'm going to do new, that today. New recipes um, coming out today. Yeah. Today's Wednesday. It's, it's um, Wednesday. So new recipes um, out. That's always exciting. So <laughs> If anybody is listening, of course, we'll plug the Patreon really quick. If you love our content, you love our podcast, and you're looking for a little bit of help with workouts, you just need a plan, like we got you. you support yeah. us with our content and our podcast. Help us help you. Um, yep. And you can become Five. a patron. Five, Five or $10 a month. I mean, monthly workouts, challenges, yeah. recipes. You can't go wrong. You can't, you can't go, go wrong. wrong. Absolutely. You really can't. And what's really cool is I don't think we announced this yet. Um, what we did to our, our patrons is we, that challenge we did in June, the, the step challenge. They, um, what was her? Yes. Uh, she won a set of kettlebells. Was it Jen Jennifer? Jennifer. Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer, congratulations. Yes. Um, for anybody that's listening, we did a step challenge for our Patreon members in mm -hmm. June. And then we, we did a random giveaway to everybody that met the um, step goal every day that we had set. And, yep. um, people fucking crushed it. Um, so she won herself a nice new set of kettlebells. Um, need to check in with her cause I got the uh, notification they were delivered. Oh, nice. Um, so I just hope, hopefully she's going to put them to good use. Cause that's, you know, our Patreon uh, workout plan can utilize uh, kettlebells. So, yeah. 
Um, Sweet. And I love doing that stuff and hopefully, and I'm sure we'll do more of those things. Oh yeah, the- absolutely. So. For sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to, I got to try to think of a, a challenge for next month. Yes. Oh my God. We have like 10 days left in the month. It's, time for I know. To start it's happening really fucking plan. fast. So, um, <laughs> and also guys, so our, our, our infamous, not our infamous, but our famous Katahdin trip is going to be happening. Yes. Just holy a, fuck. And literally a month, yeah, literally one month from today, which is we recorded today. on the 20th. Um, and yes. Drum roll. What you'll, I'll let you do. You're good with statistics. <laughs> All right. So, so guys, um, we started this podcast. Um, we released our first episode, August of 2021. Um, we first started it as a, we were going to like, Oh, we'll just do episodes whenever. And like, we'll maybe do them every couple of weeks. And you'll notice that if you look back our first month or so was very inconsistent with our release schedule. Then mm-hmm. people were like, we fucking love this. Like we want more. So we're like, Whoa, Holy shit. Like, okay. We had no expectations for the podcast, right? but we were like, we should probably do this on, on a weekly thing. So now we do it weekly, of course. And, um, we have, we're, we're sitting around 85,000 downloads for the first year as of right now, which is amazing. Like, Holy shit. Like my yeah. mind gets blown when I think about that. And I was like, we, when we were talking yesterday, Beth, I was like, how fucking cool would it, would it be if we can reach a hundred thousand streams slash downloads in the first year? So we have one mm-hmm. month to do it. And we've been averaging about 10,000 downloads a month for the past, um, few months now. Um, I think three or four months. So we only need 15,000 for this last month to hit that number. Like how cool would it be if we can a hundred thousand streams and in a science-based cool. evidence-based, no bullshit health podcast, mm-hmm. just two people that like to drop the F-bomb all the time. Like yes. it's amazing. So guys, if you are, if you like the podcast and if you're still listening at this point, I would imagine you do. Otherwise you would have tuned out at the first F-bomb. Um, <laughs> Please, we would so appreciate if you shared our podcast with a friend, family member, coworker yeah. that you think could could benefit from hearing it. I mean, we've done so many different um, topics and guests on here that we've got everybody covered at this point. And we have so mm-hmm. many amazing guests lined up. We can't wait to get some of these people on here. So lots of exciting stuff coming. So, exciting stuff. Like yeah. big, huge, huge, huge. huge. Like, people that we look up to. Um, yeah. and that we go to for information, um, mm-hmm. that big, like industry, industry, industry wide, so. industry, like nutrition president type shit. <laughs> <laughs> the unofficial. <laughs> yes. You're right. If there was a yeah. democracy for this, he would be the president. So for sure. So anyway, <laughs> so that's um, coming guys. So it's been an amazing first 11 months and coming up on this year. Um, yeah. And and honestly, like guys, like this podcast, I want to say this happened because of people that are our followers, our fans, our friends yeah. that are listening. Um, Beth and I just kind of connected and we started just, you know, everybody was like, you are the male version of Beth or Beth is the female version of you. And like, mm-hmm. so you guys spoke this into existence. So right. let's keep this shit going. Let's do it. Hell yeah. All right, everybody have a good All one. All right. Bye. And that is a wrap for this episode of Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt. Did we help you cut through the bullshit? We want to know. Send us a DM on Instagram and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. And if you did find this one helpful, why not share this episode with a friend? I know I personally love it when a friend shares their favorite podcast with me along with a text saying, Oh my God, you have got to check out this podcast. You'll love it. And of course... Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss future.